Okay. So uh, welcome to the session, everyone. My name is Rishi Bhargwaj. Uh, I will be your host for this small session that we are having called uh, the power or the biggest marketing tool is in your pocket. Okay, so let's get on with our session. Uh, without waiting any further, let's start with uh, our presentation. Okay, so I'll be sharing my screen with you guys. Should be able to see that. There we go. The topic for our presentation today is the most powerful marketing tool is in your pocket. And no surprises for guessing here which tool I'm talking about. I'm talking about your smartphone. I'm talking about the lifeline for many people. Okay, we can forget our wallets. We can forget breathing, but the moment we forget our phones, that is the time we are patting ourselves twice, thrice to check where it is. Okay, a few things here. Let me see uh, if you know a few of these guys uh, or girls. Let's see. This dude. Do you know who this dude is? Anybody? You can type, you can say, you can write on the screen as well. No idea? Okay. So if you remember from the last year, this one song got really popular and that, that was something called the Old Town Road. This dude is Lil Nas. He is a TikTok celebrity, went on to become world famous in no time. The song that went on to become a hit and even got the diamond status and so on. TikToker. Let's see if you know this dude then. Anyone? Any idea? Okay. Yeah, he yeah. makes videos. Yeah, like he does. He does. His name is Zach King. He is an Instagram celebrity or an Instagram influencer. He does make videos. He does this little bit tricks with his camera, magic, and all those things. And uh, he has a bit of a fan following on uh, Instagram. Okay. How about this girl here? That is Summer McKean. Ah, there we go. Summer McKean. And Abby, can you tell us what she's famous for? Um, YouTube. It is YouTube. She is a fashion vlogger. She is a kind of a celebrity, was surrounded in a bit of a controversy over recently, but I won't go there. Her name is Summer McKean, fashion and beauty blogger. And finally, anybody? If you are into video games. Okay. Her name is uh, I has Cupquake. That's her video game. But her actual name is Tiffany Garcia. And she is a celebrity on not just YouTube, but also on Twitch because she plays certain games. She has a fan following close to four or five million. Now, all these people I'm talking about here, they are called something as influencers. Who are these influencers? Influencers are people who have a certain kind of an aura with themselves and also a certain kind of, of an effect on their followers. And this is what we are going to be talking about uh, through, uh, throughout the majority of the session today, something called influencer marketing and how it is taking over the traditional form of marketing and where there is an opportunity for you guys to, to go in and, and join that bandwagon of influencers. Uh, so this is how the session is going to go. We'll talk about what influencer marketing is. We'll talk about why we need to get into influencer marketing. Some popular influencers will have a small activity and towards the end, we'll have some tips based on my experience, based on whatever I've learned from others, based on my knowledge, uh, reading some books and some influencers, some tips that you can use uh, to become one or on your way to become one. So let's start with our first uh, thing. It's influencer marketing, defining that. Okay, this guy must be pretty famous. Ooh, did I lose it? There we go. 
Can anybody tell me who this dude is? Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey. So that's awesome, Mason. And he is a celebrity endorser for the Lincoln brand of cars. Okay, if you don't remember, then maybe you remember. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so this dude sells or tries to sell all the various brands of Lincoln cars. Then, where did we go? This lady over here, she doesn't need any introduction, Jennifer Aniston. And she tries to sell the Avino uh, line of uh, uh, beauty products or uh, what you call hair care products and those kind of things. Now, the problem that we as marketers, when I say we as marketers, let's say I am having an agency who is representing clients like Lincoln, like Avino, and we are trying to search for celebrities. Now, the problem with these guys is they are very expensive, one. Two is they have a certain kind of fan following, which sometimes does relate to my product. Sometimes it doesn't. And three, it's very hard for us to measure the impact they have. So uh, let's say you're watching a football game or a hockey game and Jennifer Aniston comes in there and says, okay, use the Vino. That's the secret of my beauty and blah, blah, blah. I, as a marketer, do not know how much of an impact that particular TV commercial is having, how many people are inspired to go and buy that product. So keeping all these things in mind, I was looking for options, or let's say we were looking for options, and what we came up with is something called influencer marketing, where we said, okay, there is social media out there. There are people who have a certain kind of following on social media maybe 100,000, maybe 50,000, maybe even 20,000 followers. And those are like close community. They really endorse or follow their celebrity on that particular social media. So why not use those people as our uh, uh, promoters? So this is where the concept of uh, influencer marketing came into being. It's similar to celebrity endorsement, but those celebrities are very small in terms of their appeal, but they have a very... Uh, successful or hardcore fan following. Two, finding we are finding for people on social media who have an influence over a target market and we orient our marketing activities around those influencers. How we promote our products through those guys is a whole different uh, topic in itself. Then comes in terms of the advertising, what happened and what is happening in terms of numbers? I'm going to give you a few figures over here that will surprise you. Now, in 2019, Amazon spent 11 billion US dollars on advertising. Okay. Then Samsung, close to 10 billion. L'Oreal, 10 billion. Google spent close to 7 billion. In total, the top five advertisers in the world, they spent 50 billion on advertising alone in the year 2019. Now that 50 billion was spent on all the different forms of advertising, be it promotions, be it signing celebrities, be it TV commercials, be it social media and so on. Influencer marketing was a very small part to begin with. If you look at this, these figures over here, in fact, I should pull up my annotation tool. Right in 2015, in its nascent stage, influencer marketing was somewhere around 500 million in terms of the share of that huge 50 billion market. And if you see over the years, it has gone from 500 million to this range. Last year, the companies spent close to the range of $5 billion to $10 billion in terms of influencer marketing. So what it points out is companies are realizing the power of influencer marketing and are slowly diverting those big amounts that they were spending on celebrities towards this form of marketing. And this figure is going to go up, up and up. Why? Because there are new platforms and new influencers coming up every day. Okay.
look at this and this is something that the companies realize it took telephone 75 years to reach an audience of 50 million tv took half the time oh tv uh, radio took half the time tv took even less than half internet took just four years and if you see the numbers are being reduced it took twitter just nine months to reach a subscriber base of 50 million and angry birds the video game or pokemon go if you remember uh, four or five years ago it just took them 90, 19 days to reach this number. So what companies are realizing is that there is a huge potential in these platforms and all they got to do is find the right person for the right target market. Okay, so what they do is they tried scouring all the internet and here are a few examples of some famous influencers and what they were able to do. Any guesses who this dude is? No? Okay. They call him Ninja the Fortnite Warrior. For those who are new to the gaming, Fortnite is this video game that is quite popular among a certain group of people or certain group of customers. His name is Richard Tyler Blevins, also known as Ninja. He has 13 million followers on Twitch. Now, what is Twitch? Twitch is the YouTube for gamers. This is where people play games. Other people come to watch. And uh, the more fan following you have, there's a more opportunity for you to make money over there. He has 21 million YouTube followers himself. He was like 13 or 14. And he was playing with the, the likes of Greg, Travis Scott, Juju Smith, and all. At one point, this is just the average. At one point of time, two years ago, his monthly earning was running in somewhere close to 600 to 800,000. Imagine a dude sitting at home playing video games, making 600 to 800,000 a month. That's from endorsements and people were like lining up to play with him. Then he diversified. He came out with his first album, Ninja Works, Volume 1 in December 2018. Again, raised 110000 for American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. He featured in the several episodes of Family Feud. There was no going back. Then... This next dude, we call him the backpack kid. What's his contribution? He came up with that famous move, dance move. What was that? The floss that you see everybody doing. Uh, it's now a gone or, or a past thing. It's a trend which has uh, subsided now. But at that point of time, he was the one who made a lot of it famous. How? Because at the age of 16, he appeared with Katy Perry. And his uh, signature is that he always carries this backpack. That's why they call him the backpack kid. Okay, Unique, but works. He started on Instagram in 2014 when he was like, I think, 14 or 15 and started with the name I Got Bars, was tagged by another Instagrammer who had like 700,000 followers. And that was a big uh, step in terms of his popularity. Then his first audience came at the church camp. Okay, I'll just stop here for a second and ask, okay, questions. Anything so far? Be good? Veronica, Cindy, Paulina, Abby, and Mason. Okay. Yeah, I think we're all good. All right. Let's, let's carry on. Okay, so from Backpack Kid, we move on, we move on to our next uh, uh, influencer. And this one will surprise you. Why? Because at one point of time, if you remember, slimes or slime making was a big deal, was a trend that was going on. Everybody was into slime and getting those uh, uh, raw materials and... and uh, 
what you call those white or clear glues or colorful glues and, and mixing up something. And slime became popular in no time. So this particular influencer, her name is Maddie Ray. She jumped on that bandwagon of slime making. And at 12 years, she started making her own slime glues, various types, okay? Then created a record. She participated at a Playfair convention in New York in 2018 and created a record with a six ton of slime at that fair. And that got quite coverage and traction. Has like, look at this, 200,000 followers on Instagram. I'm not talking about millions and billions of followers. I'm talking about these smaller celebrities who have a very small fan following, but that fan following is hardcore. Then she creates videos about slime making on YouTube. Also has her own online slime store where you can buy and even I think sell slime as well. She organizes, and that was pre-COVID, she organizes slime bash conventions throughout the US. In fact, I was uh, trying to go to one of those just to understand what the, the deal with this phenomena is, but uh, couldn't by that time it was the fizz uh, got fizzled and uh, COVID hit after that. So, but before that, there were quite a lot of slime bash conventions that were held throughout uh, the States. Uh, she was voting in Cairns, New York Magazine for the 20 under 20. And also featured on other famous podcasts. So why are we, why are we talking about these things or these uh, people is that there is a scope for everyone to get there, but it takes a little bit of effort. It takes a little bit of patience uh, before you reach there. I'll show you, let's do one activity here, a small one, okay? This is what I want for you from you guys is, you tell me your favorite influencer. I'm not talking about celebrity. I'm not talking about player. I'm talking about an influencer on social media. Like, let's say if you go to YouTube, you watch his or her, videos a lot. If you're an Instagrammer, uh, if you're on Instagram, you follow them. If you are on TikTok, you follow them. If you are a gamer, then you make sure that you see what strategies they are using. So name your favorite influencer, which platform are, uh, do they mostly use? If you can tell me the number of followers they have and what is unique about their content. Okay. So influencer platform, number of followers, and what you think is unique about their content. I'll just give you a couple of minutes here to think about it, and then maybe we can share your uh, uh, influencers. Most of the uh, people in this session, they choose out of five, six we have, uh, they choose YouTube as uh, their go-to. And that's one reason YouTube is so popular because there's so many influencers over there and everybody has a niche for themselves, okay? Uh, this uh, person, I don't know if you know Mr. Beast, okay? That's one of the famous YouTubers. He started studying YouTube at the age of 12. Like he literally uh, slept and, and woke up YouTube and everything. So he knows the ins and outs and each of his videos on an average generate like 40 million views, 40, 45 million views on an average. And now he's become such a big star over there that he offers money. To, to for people to accept challenges or, or uh, for his challenges or whatever. But he offers like huge amount of cash prizes for the challenges that he uh, gives on YouTube. So you start small and you take steps towards that. Uh, that's uh, one of the tips that I will have for you. This is going to be our next part and probably the last part of our discussion is some tips and pointers to what you can do to join that bandwagon or make or create a niche for yourself. One, a strong personal brand is a pathway to professional freedom. You are who you are. You cannot replicate another person, okay? And there are unique things about you if you want to be a YouTube star, if you want to be a TikTok celebrity or maybe an Instagrammer, you got to follow your own personality, 
Okay, you cannot copy what Mr. Beast is doing or what Charlie D'Amelio on in a TikTok is doing or what Zach King is doing. You have to follow your own personal brand. What is that? For that, you got to do your own audit as well. Two, be willing to do stuff for free initially. Show that you care. You now, the problem with influencer marketing is the moment you gain some traction, people, it, it goes into uh, the influencer's head. And the problem is that we as human beings do not know how to price ourselves or market ourselves or, or put a cost on what we do. So in comes an influencer and says, I have 500,000 followers. So for that one post, I will charge uh, 10 grand. Now, those 500 followers are there, subscribers are there, but how many of them comment, engage, and actually do conversation with that influencer? That's a very little number. So charging a 10 grand for that particular post is not justified. So initially, when you are gaining the traction, don't worry about the money. It will come later, but have uh, that empathy towards uh, the companies who are coming to give you the business. Three, Create content that the world will enjoy rather than thinking of becoming a celebrity. Okay. Now, these dudes uh, that Mason was talking about, the supercar ones, they love the cars and they were trying to create content that people will enjoy rather than trying to become a celebrity themselves. If you go that path that, okay, I have to become a celebrity. Why don't I have followers? Why don't I have likes? I have done everything here. I have followed all the ABCs. It's not going to happen overnight. Okay. Uh, think people will enjoy it. If people enjoy it, they will definitely come back for more. Have patience. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. I, I'll, I'll give you my own personal example. Uh, I started a podcast uh, uh, a couple of years ago. I shot like 10 episodes of it. Later on, I just ran out of steam. One, because just like these things, I was looking for very quick, very fast results. Two, having a podcast, arranging interviews every week and having a full-time job is not an easy thing. And each of the episodes that you shoot, it takes time for editing, to put in the music. So I was one man team and I was doing everything. I was arranging for interviews. I was asking them and that's the time I was using Zoom. That was two years ago. Zoom became popular last year. I was using it for my podcast. So arranging for people to come for the interview, then interviewing them, then um, doing the editing and then uploading that, it took a lot of time. And I was looking for that success, why it's not coming, two interviews, three interviews. I shot this, I, I did so many good things in there. Why are not so many people not uh, coming and seeing? There's so much of stuff. It's gonna take time. It's gonna take time. Tell stories. People like it more than products. Do not sell the products, okay? Uh, let's say I'm RB, I'm a professor at Okanagan College and come and join Okanagan College. It's one of the best institutes and you are not selling. If you're trying to do that on a social media, nobody likes to be sold on social media. Tell them the stories, okay? People like to listen to those kind of things. And every person, every individual has a story associated with them. Then... Be authentic. You got to be you. That's some of the repetition from the previous one is do not copy what some person else, somebody else is doing. Stick to your own uh, personality, what you like doing the best. No time for leisure at the beginning. Okay, so what you got to do is have a calendar, uh, create an Excel sheet. In that Excel sheet, you should have a theme for the week. At least have a target that I will post one video a day or a week or one video every two, three days and put that in the calendar and keep working towards it without expecting anything in return. Keep working towards those videos. What happens is with people I've seen on YouTube is they, excuse me, they begin at a very high initially. Like I'm going to go all out YouTuber and I'm going to uh, be the star of the show. And initially one video, two video, four videos, 10 videos later, it all fizzles up. The secret of the word here is, excuse me, the key word here is consistency and patience.
create content daily. Now, if you want to be a YouTube celebrity, that's, I think, with a full-time job or with some other priorities, that's something not possible. But there are other platforms where you can do this easily. Okay, do not just think about YouTube. There is TikTok, there is Snapchat, there is Instagram. Of course, Instagram has gone on to those levels where uh, people are looking for very high definition imagery and rich media. And uh, you'll be surprised to know what some of the celebrities are doing. They keep their photographers, they hire photographers who, who uh, uh, go around with them in town, wherever they go 24 seven at times, not 24 seven, I shouldn't say, but uh, majority of the day they have a photographer. And the moment they find a spot, those photographers, they take a picture and those are paid, okay? So create content daily when I say, if you are a blogger, try to write almost every second day. If you are a YouTuber, I would say every three days or once a week, you should have a content posted there. But if you are a TikToker, it doesn't take long. You can have one, two, three videos uh, each day. Even one is uh, the minimum that is required. That's good. Diversify on the platforms. Don't stick to one. Now I'll tell you, if you want to join YouTube right now, it's very hard to create a niche for yourself on YouTube and get the traction going. It'll take you some time unless your uh, uh, content is really unique and different and entertaining. That's what people are switching to YouTube. Why many of people are watching YouTube rather than cable is because YouTube, I can sit in front of uh, a video or different sort of videos for hours and hours and don't worry about it. So if you have something entertaining, put it on YouTube. If you have some sort of an imagery, a photographer or something, there are other platforms besides Instagram and YouTube. Uh, if you are into TikTok, that's where that's the new thing. Even that one is going a little uh, on the downward side. But keep looking out for these new platforms. You never know where you will hit it. Don't just stick to one. Then document. Don't create. That's something unique. That's what it says is document don't create is you have a journey, okay? That journey, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's on Facebook, Facebook has to be documented rather than creating new stuff, which does not have a connection with the previous one. You will do that once you reach those heights. But initially you got to document your journey. So my first video, my second video, my third video, there should be some connection going on. Uh, between those. This dude, we know that I'm not going to show the video and, and uh, how he got famous was somebody spotted him singing, her, his mother recorded it, used to put it on YouTube. Gone are those days of YouTube where you can become an overnight celebrity unless you have really, really entertaining stuff, which is hard to find and differentiate these days. I'm not going to show the video. Then Collaboration is the name of the game. Who said uh, uh, that you can build the entire skyscraper yourself? You have to collaborate. And here I'm saying collaborate with local influencers, people who are trying to do the same. You endorse somebody, they endorse you back. They have a certain fan following. You have maybe a very small fan following. It multiplies. They have, have some sort of collaboration. There will be people who are uh, into that kind of, this is what is happening these days on YouTube because everybody is running out of content. Everybody is running out of. Uh, so they collaborating with each other. Okay. Go one step at a time. Start locally. Do not think about it that you are going to have million subscribers overnight across the globe. Start small, start locally, start in this way, and then slowly expand your uh, content as well as your subscriber base. Having a mentor is a good idea. A person who has done that in the past, a person who has been through the grind, they can guide you, okay? Look for one that if you can, a person who is on Facebook, if you want to be on Facebook, on Instagram, if you want to be there on, on Pinterest, if, if you want to be on that particular platform. 
try attending influencer conventions. There are quite a few that happen every year. These days it is online, but if there is something happening in, uh, it's like building a network, okay? If you are in person, if you are a professional, you will do that in person. But if you are an influencer on a particular channel, you still have to do the same. And that's where I will go to our Q and A's.